Hello everybody and welcome back to Dusty Cove. Now, I'm just going to pan the camera down and you're going to see exactly what things look like today. The ground temperature is now 5 degrees and the air temperature at 6am is 4. So pretty good really. Are you ready? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. The trees have got the start of their leaves. They're like this lime green colour. And yes, it's just looking so much warmer than what it used to. The winter was quite a, uh, in fact it was a very harsh winter. We had snow nearly every day. So hopefully this is going to be a decent spring. Now Tuesday is actually looking wet, so that could cause a bit of an issue when it comes to our planting of the seed and also the cultivating. But I'm hoping, can I just climb this here, just climb it. I'm hoping we're going to be able to still do it. Um, if, if it gets too wet then we're going to have to stop the uh, seeding. It's just going to block the drill up way too quickly and well it's just not going to be really worth doing so realistically for us to do this we need to be able to plant all the fields which we want to plant this year on sunday and monday and today of course so we have three days effectively and possibly some of tuesday i'm not too sure now i'm just driving out of cab view to begin with because i wanted to show you this this is a brand new power harrow for us I don't know the exact um, name for it, but I think it's an Alpigo or an Alpel Alpigo, yeah, must be. Um, it's a much wider power harrow than the Kuhn power harrow, which we can actually use from the Kuhn DLC. That's four meters and this one is six meters. So I'm hoping this one is actually going to be perfect for field number 10, which was actually our cover crop. We had the oilseed radish in there. It's all now been plowed in. So all we need to do now is go over the ploughing with a fairly harsh power harrow. The ground has dried up quite nicely, so it should just crumble. As mentioned before, we don't need to work it down with a cultivator after the plough as the land around here is already fairly loose. It's not really that heavy. So yeah, I mean, we're okay. We don't have to go through every single stage of the cultivation. We can slightly cut corners. Having said that, I think the power harrow is actually going to be a very good tool and it isn't really cutting corners anyway. It would be a bit unnecessary to plough it, cultivate it, power harrow it and then use a drill which can direct drill anyway. So yeah, it's this is perfect, this is going to be very good. Now today I've actually got a bit of a problem. I may have to reduce the speed of time to times five just so we can actually do everything I want to do. Um, the cows need to be fed and possibly watered and mucked out. The same with the pigs, so they need a lot of maintenance. But at the same time, we have to power harrow this field, we also have to direct drill some other fields and cultivate some fields. So it's fairly full on. In fact, these next three episodes are going to be action packed. I've kind of considered getting the drone so we can fly around and see the machinery in action. But I don't know if we're going to have enough time, because it's going to be so busy. We're going to have all of our workers going at the same time. We're going to have probably two workers and me. So three of us in total. Here is the field. Looking different since the snow melted. I'll begin to unfold this thing, and I think really, yeah, we'll do it this way. Instead of against the furrows. That would be a very rough ride. But I'm really hoping this is going to do a very good job. There was actually an option between the different rollers you want on the back. There was spiral, which is this one. Uh, there was... was it spikes? I'm gonna have to check. Yes, roller spike, roller cage, and spiral. I was debating between the cage and the spiral. I didn't really think the spikes would be suitable, but I may be wrong. So we'll start it up. This is a very nice mod, by the way. Available on Mod Hub. The download links, as usual, are below. I'll try and power harrow har this in. There we go. And yeah, there's nothing that I really want to do here. This is going to be the worker's job for today. We're going to be far too busy in different areas. But before we do move on, let me just show you the animated parts on this thing. Obviously, all the PTOs are working correctly. The shafts do spin as well. I suppose they're supposed to because the one from the tractor to the implement isn't doesn't matter so much I suppose for this um, and then yeah everything else seems to be acting and working as it should do just get out the dust there and yeah very good working width 6 meters 
absolutely fantastic. What I want to do is just put it onto a worker now so I can see exactly how they're going to turn around because there is a chance they're going to just drive straight into the river, which means we're going to have to quickly intervene and pull them from the controls as if they were learning to drive. Let's just see what happens. But we've got plenty of horsepower behind this, 315 horsepower. It is very close actually. Although, it seems to be okay. Well that's going to save me a lot of time because otherwise, well, hang on, yeah, because otherwise we would have to power harrow lengthways just so we can get the worker to work correctly. So that is all good. The only issue is, <laughs> I am nowhere near a vehicle and I don't really want to teleport. So what we're going to do is just have a journey in the tractor, we'll have a little bit of a ride back up to the top, at least we can... Uh, obviously have a machine takers up there instead of have to walk it and then we'll probably have to run over to the livestock farm to pick up a vehicle there we may as well do the pig farm first providing we've got enough feed and water we've definitely got the water but I'm not too sure about the feed so uh, the forecast for today I don't know what the temperature is going to be but tomorrow it's going to only going to be 8 so I suppose today may be similar we'll see what it gets to there is a bit of early morning mist moving in, so we'll keep the time at times 15 currently, just so we can clear it. Strange overlap. I'm guessing because it's its first run, it will sort itself out in a second. Otherwise, we're potentially losing about 2 metres of working width. Ooh, the gates, yes, the gates must be shut. Otherwise, it's going to confuse this track to no end. You have just bumped into my gate. Are you aware of that? Oh, oh good. It's managed to continue on its own. I probably distracted them. I put a bit of pressure on. Honestly though, they should be okay from now onwards. If they're not, then they're sacked. Uh, they should be able to see the gate. All right, how oh, crikey. Almost turned into dagger squish. Dagger win that got squished, yeah. Great joke. Okay, well here we are, still misty, um, obviously we've got sugar beet, water is down behind us, let me just see exactly what they do require, uh, right, pigs, uh, they require everything, water will do first and then sugar beets are all good, I think there is actually some canola or something, sunflowers maybe, in this trailer over here, please tell me I left a tractor or at least a pickup, I did, brilliant. Well, the pickup can tow the water bowser. I don't think it can really tow the trailer. So if we can at least do the water, at least they're not going to die of dehydration. And it's actually almost full. So we'll just head down here. Give them everything they require in the water department. Yeah, that's quite heavy. That actually pushed the pickup. I was going to get the transit van. I think we probably should do still. I haven't really decided what colour. I think you can modify the colour. Because although this Bowser isn't really that big, it is still surprisingly heavy. I'll put it in here to begin with. Um, and then... Yes, we're going to have to drive back to the farm with this, I suppose, to be able to pick up a tractor and bring it back over here. Now, I actually did think I had brought the Valtra tractor over. That was the initial idea. That's what we were supposed to be doing. But clearly, either I took it away by accident or I just forgot. But yes, that is a tractor that should belong here. But yes, we're going to have to decrease the time speed as soon as this fog lifts. It shouldn't be too long. It's usually only for here, here for about three hours maximum, early morning stuff. It's now 9am, so yeah, any second it should go. But at least it's sunny and the temperature is rising. You're probably going to think, well now we're here, we might as well do the cows instead which I suppose is actually 
quite a fair argument. I think we maybe should do. Especially as the cows require more. Yeah, they do, because the uh, pigs have already got the sugar beet, but the cows don't really have anything here at all. So I'm just going to park this into the workshop, park this in the workshop, and then we can uh, move on. Now, what I do require is the JCB to muck out, and then we're going to drive over to the other side of the road, and we're going to put some bales in the feed mixer, which I believe actually is what the voucher is doing. I think it is. We'll just get a bucket load of this. It's not really a priority, but as we're here, we may as well just clean this out. And this will be going over to field number 16, because that is the field we need to muck spread. Again, another job which is on the ever-growing to-do list, but yeah, we, we can't do everything at once. It's very tough. Playing a realistic series really does give you just a, a slight idea of what being a real farmer is all about, especially um, if you're doing livestock as well as arable, which must be very full on. Because this, even though it's much more realistic than real life, it still isn't real life. It's much more leisurely, but it still feels fairly hectic. So yeah, being an arable and livestock farmer in real life must be pretty tough. But without farmers, I think it's fair to say the world would stop. It would keep spinning, but the people wouldn't keep living. Okay, so that is nicely done. Come on, mist. Clear off. You're destroying a lovely spring day. Pull that too. Ow. Ow, oh, just jammed myself in the gate. Ow. Right, okay, so we'll just tip this, and then, yes, over to the other side of the road to sort stuff out with the total mixed ration. In fact, there is a lot of stuff on the other side of the road. There we go. I suppose what we should do is have another worker in another field while we're doing this. It's kind of counterproductive doing it this way. We do have the class tractor here. It's here somewhere. What we could do actually, field 40 is this big field to the left of us here. That needs to be, I think it's direct drill, uh, let me just see. Yes, thyro drill. We need to put orchid rape in there, so just open the gate for later. The wind is blowing the gate open for us. And yes, the vulture should be here. Uh, uh, where is it? Where have I put it? It must be in here. The combine's going in a few days, by the way. Oh, where is everything? Unbelievable. Well, one thing at a time, let me just jump into the class tractor. Because um, this tractor needs to do the work in field 40. So at least we can get a worker going while we're on the hunt for the voucher tractor. And to be honest, I really have no idea where it is. It must be obvious, really. I do find, actually, that if you're a viewer of these videos, it's actually easier to remember where I've put stuff than it is if I'm playing myself. It's surprising. It's because I've got so much other stuff to think about, and then you miss stuff out, and then I say I'm going to do something, and then I forget, and then I never do it. It's challenging, actually. Surprisingly. So, uh, yeah, let me just pull into here. I'll reverse back. I'm going to drop the plow off as it's not going to be required again this year. And then we're going to put a direct drill on the back of the tractor. Yes, I thought it might go that way. Come on, lift up. Well, I think it's going to be okay here. We will be using the Ford tractor, but it'll be later. So if I can just get this worker on the go, then at least everybody will be happy. Let me just make sure the other worker is still going. Yep. I think. Yep. Good. So, so far, so good. You know what? I don't know if this mist is actually going to lift. It might just be so humid that the um, 
humidity is just creating a huge mist and is never actually going to clear. So we do have a number of seed drills actually. We've got this one back here, we've got a planter there and I won't spin my head 360 degrees but we have another one just over there somewhere. A very small one. This is the one I usually use. It's going to need to be refilled um, but I was going to do it with pallets but as we don't have pallets here today we'll just have to use the auger. I think it's an auger. Oh no wait, there isn't one, it's just a refill point. Uh, this is fertiliser though, I've gone to the wrong place. It's actually just behind that sprayer. Gonna have to move this first of all. A little bit tight through here. Oh look, some snow. Crush the snow. Yeah, it's, it's almost melted, it's just like slop. Well, the Challenger can go here for the time being. Ah, oh, come on, let me through. Forgetting to open the doors again. It's a good job we have the magic trick of being able to teleport through doors and through glass windows and stuff. What would we do without it? Right, so now we are finally in the correct position. We can refill it. I think we're okay for diesel, so I'm not going to do that at the moment. Um, 361 litres is going to get us quite a long way. It should be able to do all of this field. There we go. I'll shut the cover. I'm assuming it's hydraulic. I don't think it is, though. Right. This is the issue, you see. When it gets so hectic, I'm jumping jobs like mad. Um, ideally, I want to just be on one job, but you've got to keep thinking and you've got to keep getting, keeping stuff going. Like, there's no point in me doing all my kind of stuff working around if the workers are just sitting about. Uh, okay, so the reason why it looks a little bit strange is because the, uh, well, the headlands were bailed. The rest of it wasn't, I don't think. Oh no, oh no, the headlands were chopped and the rest of it wasn't, so that's why it looks weird. I must make sure it's on oilseed rape, which it is. Good. And then, come on worker, do a decent job for us, please. It may get confused for the first time, but after that it should be fine. Now, the chop straw doesn't actually disappear unless you plough it in or cultivate it, so it looks weird at the moment, but it should be fine when it grows. I think it does grow through it. I don't know why I didn't see that voucher tractor. It's quite clearly here. It was just in the shed there. Weird. Oh, I must remember to shut the lights off too. They do not need to be on. Burning electricity. I think the outside light goes off with this one here. It does. Perfect for winter time and night time, but during the day, just not necessary. That's nice, we've got a really good uh, arrangement of bales here. We've got two hay, which is what we require, and two straw. Come on, shift down. So, one mixture to begin with as we have lots of other stuff to do. The time is now times 5, 11.43. Perfect. And then the straw bale. There is a lot of this, you've probably realised already. But this series wouldn't really work if I neglected the animals because it's supposed to be realistic and no genuine farmer is going to kill their animals off just because they can't be bothered to feed them. As you will know, especially if you are a farmer or know many farmers, farmers are very hard working. They have a lot of pride in their work. So we mustn't become one of these so-called farmers who, uh, yes, doesn't really care about the animals. I don't think there would be one anyway in the world. Only us, of course. In the unrealistic series, when we can't really be bothered to do stuff properly. <laughs> yeah, but in the realistic series, we're hard workers. So 
So we're off to the other side of the road now to go and scoop up a couple of loads of silage. To fill it up to the top. 25% needs to be put in. There is the Massey Ferguson tractor, which is what we're going to use. It's actually best to have two tractors on the go because you don't have to keep swapping between the two attachments, between the bale spike and the bucket. How are we doing then? How are the workers doing? Worker A is about a third of the way through. Worker I is still going. It didn't get stuck, thankfully. And yes, it's just started. So load number one. It's a good job we made this silage. We would have been very stuck without it. Now the pigs are going to be sold, um, but it'll be later, autumn time. I'm trying to get them to reproduce as much as possible first of all. Obviously the more they reproduce, the more money we get. There's two bucket loads of this tractor and that will make a 99% mix. It would have been 100% if the bucket had filled 100%. Okay. So that is roughly 4,000 litres, the equivalent of a bale. So we'll put this into the mixer as well. And I'm hoping this is going to suffice for some time. I don't particularly want to be doing this again in the next couple of episodes, although it's going to have to be done if they require it. What we can do with it being spring is give them some grass and also just some silage on its own. All sorted. So, what we need to do now is of course mix it all up. If I press B, it engages the PTO and it's going to create a really good mix for us. They're desperate for this. Well, I hope they're happy with it. You can see it's filling up. Again, the grass we can do, the straw we can do. The straw isn't 100% necessary though. It's only for manure, otherwise it's just slurry. So, oh wow. Oh, what? Yeah, we have more left over. That's really good. Because that suffices for three days, which is actually the rest of spring. Almost the rest of spring. It's very helpful to us. So with that good news, what we're going to do is drop off this feed mixer and we're now going to give them some grass, which is actually over at the other yard as well. And then it's going to be on to field number, which one is it? 10 if it's ready for the cedar, otherwise onto the pigs. We're just going to have to see how we're doing. Feel 40, looking good. The tractor has progressed. It's actually beyond the chopped straw now. Is it still moving? It is. Fantastic. So, so far, so good. The hard work, I never saw that car. What? What? That monitor, that annoying monitor. I don't know if anybody else noticed, but the uh, money was dropping dramatically it's because the uh, cedar for some reason was set to buy buy the cedars that uses it uh, which was not the correct setting it wasn't like that before I suppose I must have adjusted it at some point and then forgotten to change it back so yes the money is now not rocketing down it's actually using the seed we've already put in it which is much better
which moved the sugar beet harvester across. I think it's either slipped or I've knocked it with something. And this forage wagon, amazingly, has still got grass in from last year. Not totally realistic because it would have fermented. But as we've got it still, we're going to give it to the cows and hopefully they're actually going to consume most of it because I do want to get a fresh batch. That is another job we have to do. Not only do we have to plant all the fields and cultivate the fields, we actually have to also fertilise the grass fields which we want to cut this year. Go on then car. Go on car. Come on! Angry tractor driver. Snow. Lots of snow. Very mushy. 13 degrees. I'm surprised it hasn't totally thawed. You'll be disappearing very, very soon. Okay, let's just pile out the back. Okay. They didn't take much. Uh, yeah, surprisingly small amounts. It filled it, though. Well, um... Water isn't desperate, so we can leave that for the time being, and yeah, it's just going to be a case of giving the pigs some various things. It would be nice to be able to give them just pig food, because it would fill up every of their every every one of their boxes which they require. So um, every grain, and also the sugar beet. Is that a space? Yeah, it is. We'll, we'll put this in here. And then, yeah, that's good. You know what? Um, yeah, we'll leave it here because we'll take this tractor over to the farm. Uh, but I'm just thinking, what can we take with us as it is quite a long way? We might as well just take something. So, corn we can't do. Wheat. Wheat or barley. Brilliant. There is a trailer here. I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. You've probably noticed. And we don't need the cover. And we'll check up on the worker again just as we go past. There's been no messages up, so there really should be no reason for us to keep checking it, really. Until maybe then. It was getting very close to the barn. Uh, but yes, we're going left out of here. Oh, that monitor, I can barely see. and then we're going right into here. The map already feels transformed to what it was like in the winter. It's so open and bleak, and then as soon as the leaves come back on the trees, it feels so, you know, everywhere looks much tighter. There's not as much space about, although it's the exact same area, just because of the leaves and everything, it just feels a much smaller place. Surprising. Uh, wheat or barley? I'll use some wheat. Very good. We'll take a full load. It's not going to rain, so we don't need to put the cover over. And the other trailer which is there, we'll actually use as well. I think it's sunflowers, like I said before. Now as it's going to be a really full on time, I think what we may be doing in the next episode is renting two more direct drills so that we can, well all three of us, the two workers and me can go and uh, plant nearly every field in one huge go. Uh, there's no real point in buying two more because they're not exactly cheap and it's not going to cost us too much to rent them. It seems like the sensible option. If we own just one so that we can use it whenever we want for no extra cost and then in very pressured times we can get two more just leased from a company. I think that is going to be a very sensible approach financially. So, yeah, chances are that's what we'll be doing. Uh, with it being a leased uh, cedar, I may be able to get an even bigger one to do some of the other fields. We will see. But, yes, I would love to be able to complete all of the seeding within the next video. That would be great. Um, now, talking about crop types, most of the fields are actually going to be corn or maize. 
Um, there's going to be a few which are oilseed rape, oilseed rape I should say. Um, but yeah, not many cereal crops. There will be a few, maybe one, but we'll see. Because this year, really, we're going to be doing a great deal of work with the Crone Big X. A lot of work. We've already got lots of grain in storage and it should store okay for two years. So, yeah, we're not really too pressured for cereal crops at all. I feel to be always feeding these pigs. They eat so much. So far, we haven't got a penny out of them. They're very tight. Um, yeah, I was expecting the icon to unload to appear. Why would that be? Why has it not appeared? Very strange. Well, that is intriguing. I have no idea why it's not appearing. Because we can, of course, give them wheat. It's totally empty. Maybe it's the time of year. I haven't really looked into it that much. Um, what crops they require at certain times of year. So, yeah, I can't say. Instead, we'll put the cover on, we'll put it into the shed and we'll give them the sunflowers instead. If it doesn't accept these either, then it must just be the time of year. Seasons does have control over quite a lot of aspects of the game. So, yeah, I can fully understand that if there is something not quite working how it used to, because obviously there's a limitation on it, for the better, being realistic and stuff. Like for the cows, you can't give the cows any grass in the winter. I don't know why you'd want to, because there wouldn't even be any fresh grass. So, is it going to appear for the sunflowers? No. Okay. So, yes, there must be something not accepting it at the moment. It, it comes up here, but it just says sunflowers is not accepted, because it's the water area. So, yeah, that is the, the pigs sorted, amazingly. How weird. Well, if anybody knows differently, please do let me know. Maybe I've just totally overlooked a control, which I always knew about, which would be kind of weird, but it's always possible. Anyway, we mustn't keep messing around here, we must uh, move on, as we need to get some fields planted. This tractor may have to be used, thinking about it. Yes, this tractor is going to have to be used. I think, actually, what we'll do is we'll bring a, um, a, a cedar over to field 10. So the seed drill or planter I should probably call it. Oh, hang on one second. A class is on sale. Well, that is interesting. That is exactly what our new combine is going to be. A class. I am fascinated by the deal. We may have to accept it. 12 hours it lasts. So what we can do is at least take this uh, planter over to field number 10 and get a, a, oh no we can't get another worker we only have two but we can at least take it over there so uh, yeah we'll get it refilled and all ready now this plant which I'm going to use is actually pretty big but scarily small if that makes any sense at all the reason why it is big and scarily small is because it's got a very narrow working width but it's extremely long for what it is so it's kind of deceptive it looks like it's going to do a lot of work in a short period of time but actually it takes forever. In fact, I know for a fact, yep, lots of facts there, that this planter takes about two and a half hours to three hours uh, just to plant field number 10, which is what it's going to be doing. That's real time. Uh, so yes, it's going to be uh, a worker's job. It's going to be in depth as well. Let me just refill it. Um, yeah, class stuff. Well, this is it, um, and yes, there is a deal. There is indeed a deal on it. 20% off. The Lexian 740, the smallest one can, we can buy here. Um, I think we're going to go with standard for most things. Although I do like Terratrax, I really do. Chaff spreader, radial just distributors. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. Uh, yeah, which one should we go for? Chaff spreader or radio distributors. I suppose we don't need to go fancy, do we? 
We really don't. I mean, this alone is going to cost us about 300,000, although we do get the money back from the Dominator. So, yeah, we do have to buy the header too. That's fairly reasonable, I suppose. Did we get 20% discount there? I'm hoping we did. Yeah, I, I think we did, because we had the extras there. The Dominator is still worth quite a bit of money. We must also buy the header while it's still in sale. So let me just trawl through all the different mods I have. It is the 900, I believe, or the 750. I think it was the 900 I wanted. It's going to have to be standard. So a very expensive asset. There is no real way of getting around it because leasing would be extortionate and buying it's expensive too. Combines are just expensive. It's just how they are. But what can we do? We can't do anything about it. We just have to pay that price. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. I need to decide exactly which header. That one there. Oh, that is fantastic. This mod's great. It tells you exactly which header is required for a certain um, trailer. So, you have to pay for the class color. Okay. Well, I suppose there's no way around it, really. That's that sorted. So it's all bought 339,000. I'm hoping to get about 40,000 back. So it could be about 300,000 in total. Don't get me wrong. We have spent a lot of money in this series. But at least we're doing stuff right. Instead of just cheating. Now for anybody who is now posting a comment about the profitability of this farm, please just refrain for a second just while I explain something. Basically, on the surface, it looks like we started off with over a million pounds and have currently ended up with only 300,000 and not really gained too much in between. But let me just stop you there. We didn't start off with that much equipment, so we've had to buy a lot of equipment which immediately takes a lot of money out of our bank accounts. Secondly, all of the money which we spent last year hasn't actually been recovered by us. It's all in storage. We actually had a lot of fields harvested, but we've barely sold anything at all. So there is actually quite a bit of potential money in storage. So if I was to sell it all, you'd suddenly see that we've probably got uh, maybe £400,000 just sat there. We then have the pigs which need to be sold, which will be sold at some point, and there is actually a lot of equipment which we currently own which is due to be sold, because obviously we've upgraded and stuff, just no longer required. So if you just bear with me until the end of the series, we'll see exactly how much money this farm is worth. And I think when you add it back up again, it won't be the same amount, but it will still be pretty good. Yeah, I don't need to go in there. So, yes, the Lexian is at the store. I will just quickly go over to it at the end of this episode, which will be in a minute or two. Um, but obviously we can't really do anything with it. We'll be taking the Dominator at the same time. Looking good. Looking very good. So here we are. Field 10. With our extremely large cedar. Or I think it is a planter actually, I'm not sure. Oh no. It is a cedar. So what should we put in here? It doesn't need to be maize to begin with. We may make the smaller fields maize. Now what we could do is plant beans, but we'd have to treat them as just beans instead of soybeans, because I don't think soybeans are even planted in the UK. Which actually would make a more interesting crop than just doing wheat or barley. And you know what? I've already decided to do that. So we'll do it. I don't need to be in the tractor. We'll let the worker sort itself out, find its bearings and stuff. But that is the maximum working width. That's all it is. So it's, it is a weird one. It's a strange machine. I suppose really, if you get rid of the hopper, it is small. And yeah, that is an air seeder. Not a planter. Anyway, 
Let's just go and see our power harrow. It's done a good job, except for just down there, weirdly. Why would it do that? It's just missed a bit. Where is it? Where is it? Don't tell me it's in a river. Oh no, there it is. Brilliant. Good machine. It all looks to be working very well over here. Now as we know everything is now working correctly, I'm going to have to stop the worker as we actually don't have three workers. We only have two. Oh, how weird. Oh, I remember that from before. Can you remember one of my other series? I think it was Waxcom Manor Farm. I used to just suddenly do that and it would make me jump. Yes. Uh, so yes, uh, this tractor is going to have to stay put until next time. It might sound like a bit of a silly rule, but actually we only do have two fully employed workers and no part-time. So that tractor's working over there, the other one is over there in field 40, and we're obviously here. Some time has passed, I've actually just taken a flying trip over to the class Dominator. It says Mega, but I think Dominator Mega, I don't know, I think it is actually a division of the Dominator series, obviously by class. Um, I never really did understand the Mega and the Dominator being printed on the same machine, but not to worry. But I really do love this machine. I think what we're going to do is just do a cold start on it first of all. And then, yeah, it's going to be time to say goodbye. So here we go. First start since winter. And it's done it first time. Reliable machine. Simpler engineering. Although it's still not exactly simple. Okay, you're doing a bit of a bush push with the header. We'll swing around, we're going to go over to the store and we'll see what they can give us for it. It actually has been a fantastic combine. The only reason why we're getting rid of it is because it was very slow. It, it took us a long time to do the harvest last year. I spent, it's got to be between 5 and 10 hours off screen just harvesting stuff. Whereas if I had a bigger combine, which we now actually do, the 740 Lexian, it's obviously going to be much bigger, meaning it can't get down some of the tracks as easily, but it's just going to do the job so much faster. Not in an unrealistic way at all, because the 900 header is actually fairly small, um, but just in a much more manageable way. So many people have been wondering when I was actually going to change the combine. I think some people lost faith, but it's happening today in this episode. Kind of unplanned, because I wasn't expecting the sale. I was initially saying that it was on order, technically it was on order, but now they've done, wow, oh that is great demand for barley, and we have so much barley, it's an offer we can't really refuse to be honest, kind of makes me annoyed that we, I oh, know we do, we do have a bigger trailer, yes we, we've got three trailers, again, we need to sell one, it was going to be the biggest one I sold, just because it's worth more and it's not as manageable around the tighter areas but when it comes to selling lots of barley that's the trailer we need the final leg of our journey these are sad times but look at that thing what a beauty we'll have to buy this one again on another farm this is definitely not the end but it must now mysteriously disappear in a puff of smoke. How much are you going to give it as for it? 40,000! Oh wow, that is good. Plus the headers and stuff. 4,000. And then the header. 8,000. Almost 9. No, that's pretty good. Happy with that. Except for the extreme rate our money is going down. So here it is. What have we spent our money on? Wow, this thing is nice. How do we spin the ladder around? We can't. I think you have to do it with IC. Oh, this feels different. Very different. Okay, the last thing we want to do is crash it straight away. There is a wall behind us. Somewhere behind us. And here is our new header. I mean, we could have gone with the 750, but I think the 900 is just as just as manageable around the corners but better in the field so yeah I think I've made the right decision if a tractor is towing the header trailer when we go around that really tight bend near field number 16 I think we'll be okay
Right, so what we're going to do is put this onto here to begin with. Um, we're actually going to finish the episode in a second, and then at the beginning of the next episode, we will sell some barley. I mustn't forget. Need to fold that up. Good. That all seems perfect. So, what do you think, the Lexian 740? Have I made a good choice or a bad choice? I mean with the size and everything, not the brand. The brand is perfect. Uh, we're going to need beacons though. And technically an escort. Doesn't it look shiny and new? There is a lot to be said for a new combine. Alright, this is a bit of a trickier part as we've got to go through all the houses and buildings and built up areas with cars coming. I just hope my header is alright. I can't see it actually. That is concerning. Stick my head out the window. We're fine. The header is still there. So we're going to put this in the yard the other side of the road uh, just because it's much bigger and perfect for the combine. We're going to park it here and Worker C has actually just finished as well. Let me just turn everything off here. And there it is, the class Lexian. Soon to be used in a few months' time. Anyway, we're going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.